Hello community. Yes, today it is the time. Finally, we're going to talk about new jobs with the new wave of AI. So what are those jobs? Now, there is definitely a wrong perspective to start. So let's go the wrong way first. Now, when I started, you had the distinction between data analyst, data scientist, data engineer, machine learning engineer, research scientist, and you had more or less the big five, Python, C++, Java, SQL, and R. And you see here in what extent you should, you are expected to be able to use those five frameworks. Now, this is the classical job segmentation before AI hit. Also would be wrong to go from the resource side. I have here from a commercial here, you have four on-demand GPU. You rent out a GPU. So there are always four RTX A6000, four RTX A6000. You have here Lambda, you have Fluidstack, you have CoreWeave, and you have Waste. Now, just to give you an idea, A6000 NVIDIA uh, GPU with 48 gigabyte VRAM in 2020 prices was about four and a half thousand US dollars. So, and you see, you can rent here on the amount GPUs here from, I don't know, some dollar per hour to five dollar per hour. I have no idea if those are the correct prices. This was for a commercial screenshot, but to give you an idea, you have options. You have here really options to have four RTX 6000, really prices you can say, yeah, this is competitive and it does not make sense at all to buy an own data center NVIDIA GPU. So you see, it is neither the old jobs title nor the old classification here. So let's try the right perspective. What does industry need? because we're working for client, we are working for customer. If you are just doing it for your hobby, this is it for today. Thank you. And we go on for if you want to really sell your services. So luckily here in June 2nd, 2023, we have here from the World Economic Forum an article uh, about here, when they ask 1,600 machine learning practitioners and business leaders that work with AI, covering industry from insurance, financial services, logistic, retail, e-commerce, and software. And there are two insights. So 72% of those people say they will increase their investment in AI in 2023, nearly every single industry. And those who want to integrate AI and work with here yeah, now generative models, LLMs, the vast majority are looking for open source model or cloud API models. So you have close to 80% here in this category. And there are only a very few are looking for here some particular uh, built solution that built their own, maybe with a lot of R&D but their main market is here with 80% open source model, cloud API based models. So let's have a look at this. Yeah, use cases, insurance companies for claim processing, retail and e-commerce have focused on customer chatbots, 61%. Financial services have here investment research, analyze financial statement, historic market data, and other proprietary data sources to provide summaries, interactive charge, and even take actions with some plugins. So those are the, want the specific use cases from the three industrial branches. Generally, billions of dollars will be spent. So why not participate? In my last video about new jobs created by AI, I ask, what are those new jobs? So let's have a look. Now, if we choose one of the big three. We choose here Google and we choose here Vertex AI. And this is from a YouTube new video from Google. And the YouTube video is called Get Started with Vertex AI. Copyright Google. You had four 
classical use cases until three weeks ago. You had your machine learning APIs, no code, everything is done for you. You just say, hey, this is it, do. Then you had here your auto ML in Vertex AI. You had predictive models, hyperparameter tuning, feature engineering, no code. Detect here the object in the, in the images. Typical example, auto ML, clear. Then you had here, if you are working here, with SQL, Postgres, all database oriented jobs. You had here BigQuery machine learning. This was, if you want, machine learning with SQL code. So no PyTorch, no TensorFlow, no really going deep inside. But if you could use SQL, if you could code in SQL, then you could build here your BigQuery machine learning models. And then finally, maybe what we all know here is the end-to-end -end AI with custom models here, with custom code, hyperparameter tuning. So we were using here Vertex AI for our specific tuning purposes. So those were more or less here the four cases that we had before three weeks. And then something happened, you know, Vertex AI suddenly became with generative AI, with LLM. And this was a very interesting one. And even more interesting that they say, they have now here their latest Google Foundation models, their latest Google LLMs, Palm, whatever. But interestingly here, they declared that they will open up here and use open source model on Vertex AI. So they have a model garden. They have a platform where they have their Google specifics, then they have the open source mod models, and they will have sort third party models. All of those will be included in the model garden by Google, where you can apply it in the Vertex AI. And I think this is interesting. So the big three move away from their proprietary LLMs and they say, hey, we have to provide here a multitude of LLMs, third party, open source model. And I think this is a real interesting move, an intelligent move. Then maybe even you can upload your open source model and it will be taken care of by Vertex AI. Now, what does it mean it will be taken care of? How complicated is it? Now, just to show you here, this is now a video by Google, a YouTube video with the title, How to Tune LLMs in Generative AI Studio. And you know, the Generative AI Studio is now the new part here. So as you can see, currently they have the studio on the language and on the vision part. So we have here the transformer for language and the vision transformer. Beautiful. So you have, at first you have a prompt gallery. So you can use here, your, you can try out your prompts. You can create prompt template. You can have structured prompts. You can have zero shot or few shot prompting. They show you how you can simply provide examples here in natural language, and they will do everything for you so that you can evaluate the efficiency of your prompt here in the prompt gallery. But the thing that we are interested in is the tuning. So we can fine tune our models here in a very easy step. Look, there's almost no code at all. We just click here on tuning. Then we say create a fine tuned model. We have here our data set. We can upload our specific data set, a simple JSON file, or if you have here a bucket with Google Cloud, if you have any location in Google, just select the file that you want. The format is simple. You have an input field and an output field. They tell you where your Google Cloud Storage locations should be. And this is it. You choose the model, you choose the tuning data set, and you see down here in the pipeline where you are and when the fine tuning model finished. You have here the duration, for example, of the fine tuning 48 minutes, started here, completed here. The name, Yes, temporary runtime environment, the region, the labels, whatever. So, and almost no code fine tuning of LLMs 
for everybody. And I think what's really interesting here, the, the provision of, the, of your personal or corporate data set, a simple JSON file, and it just digests here the training data set for the fine tuning. Wow, nice, nice. And you know what's even more impressive when you are done and you have your fine tuned LLM and you do not care about how many GPUs, how the scaling happened, what the parallelism, data parallelism, model parallelism, or whatever. It just happens in the background and they're more optimized that you ever will be able to do this on a cloud cluster. And then here, you have here your three ellipse and you say some simply deploy the fine-tuned model to an endpoint. My goodness, this is really that everybody can do this and have a fine-tuned LLM with your personal or corporate data set, you deploy it to an endpoint. And then what is the next logic step? You build your own app. And now I told you three weeks ago, even this changed. And here from Google Cloud Block, we have now generative AI app builder. So you just tell the app sheet in your natural language, hey, I want to build an app. I want that my customer can put this in or this should be done. You just talk to the system and it generates an app for you. So of course, I think this is in alpha or in beta, I don't know. But anyway, three weeks ago, for me, it is now beginning of June, 2023. Google said they are starting today. Trusted testers all can now access and try out this generative AI app builder. And since I would like to show you this, but I just applied for the trusted tester <laughs> with Google. So I don't know if I will be accepted, but whenever I will be accepted, I can show you a little bit more detail. But of course, the main interesting point is here. You can build your apps, not in weeks or in years, and you do not need any language or any coding. You build it in minutes or in hours. And you know, the backbone, if you want, of your particular app will be your custom trained LLM with your corporate data. And all the schema, all of this is handled within the Google Cloud platform. They optimize it for you to have a dialogue flow. So you speak in your natural English language and they built the app for you. And you can continue later on optimizing the app. You say, hey, now I want to have a new address field or I want to have the ability that my customer can send me back an image of a product. So it is just included in your app. If you want, there is a beautiful informative video how AppSheet is innovating with generative AI. And yes, you guessed it, Google calls it AppSheet. But now here, custom trained LLM as the backbone for building an app in minutes, almost no coding necessary. So I feel if I wanna have here my YouTube channel where I wanna show people how to use and generate and code their own AI, oh gee, I have to get a lot of new knowledge. This is just Google, there's also AWS, and I think they're preparing the same, so I think the technical landscape will change significantly in the next weeks. And now coming back, what the heck? Where are now the new job titles? Let me show you this. So I go here to www.cloudskillsboost.google and there's the Google Cloud Skill Boost page. And there you can start with a learning path. And here Google tells you what credential you can get, what jobs they're looking for, where they give you here a training path for your future. So, and it is not depending if you come from Azure, they have Google Cloud Architect for Azure professionals, or if you come from AWS, from Amazon professionals, they show you here. If you know this, this is our system, how you can transform your knowledge here to Google Cloud. And I think the other will have something similar. So the big three will have interdependent platforms. So 
you see here there's a courses you can take but i think where is it yeah careful you have to pay you have to be either 29 bucks per month or you take an annual subscription for 300 bucks a year then you can take all the courses so, but what are they looking for generative ai is more or less what i just told you generative ai is this new application building with your fine-tuned llm with here a generative ai in the background where you can use your normal english language and the app will be built for you without any knowledge of any coding skills applied public sector learning path and then you have google cloud infrastructure but where are the titles yeah cloud architect or cloud engineer business intelligence and data analytics with looker this is an application you guessed it from google we have a startup cloud engineer learning path we have a google cloud computing foundation path we have here the app sheet developer now you know what's an app sheet app sheet developer learning path the contact center engineer i don't know what this is i have to take this course myself and learn Google Workspace Administrator, this is clear. Workspace End User Learning Path. We still have the Database Engineer Learning Path, an API Developer Learning Path, Cloud Developer, Data Analyst, the classical ones, Machine Learning Engineer, if you build real your own LLMs, then the Data Engineer, Security Engineer, hybrid and multi-cloud architect i think this will be one of the hot topics coming up in the next month you will not be limited to one cloud provider aws um, whatsoever you will have multi-cloud switching independent where you have your data your apps can run on any cloud provider platform multi-cloud hot new topic cloud architect in general cloud engineer cloud digital lean digital leader so you think this is starting of june 2023 from one of the big three you clearly see where all the paths are leading it will become really really easy to have your own llm build your own app great news for anyone who is interested to build a startup create a startup here all your internet presence all your specific apps you want to develop for your customer if you start with 100 customer if you scale up to thousand customers or you scale to your first million customer google cloud compute takes care about everything here you just have to pay and i think if you are a business owner you pay your rent you pay electricity you pay insurance and more or less you will get used to to pay for your cloud services but this will open up here the interactive world app-based world for your services or for your products i hope i've given you a short overview today was about one of the big three google and i think in the next video i will focus maybe on one of the others thank you for watching thank you for listening i hope it was informative and i see you in my next one